So let's do the integral of cosine x over 1 minus cosine of x. We should start off by multiplying both the top and bottom parts of the fraction by 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x, which is the conjugate of the denominator. If we simplify this expression, this becomes cosine of x plus cosine squared of x over 1 minus cosine squared of x, since 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x using the difference of squares. If we take the trigonometric identity, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1, and subtract both sides by cosine squared of x, we get the identity 1 minus cosine squared of x equals sine squared of x. So we can rewrite the integrand as cosine of x plus cosine squared of x all over sine squared of x instead of 1 minus cosine squared of x. We can also split the fraction and rewrite it as a sum of two smaller fractions. So the integrand becomes cosine of x over sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. For the first fraction, we can express it as cosine x over sine of x times 1 over sine of x. And for the second fraction, we can express it as cosine of x over sine of x all squared. Cosine of x over sine of x is the definition of cotangent of x, and 1 over sine of x is cosecant of x. So the entire first term is cotangent of x times cosecant of x. And for the second term, cosine of x over sine of x is the definition of cotangent of x once more, so this is just cotangent squared of x. So since the integrand is a sum of two terms, we can integrate them separately. The integral of cotangent x cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x, because the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cotangent of x cosecant of x, which is a standard derivative. Since we're integrating cotangent of x cosecant of x instead of negative cotangent of x cosecant of x, the result is off by a constant multiple of 1, so the result is negative cosecant of x. We also need to add the integral of cotangent squared of x to the result, and I'm going to work out the integral separately. So here's how we do the integral of cotangent squared of x. If we consider the identity cotangent squared of x plus 1 equals cosecant squared of x and subtract 1 on both sides, we get the identity cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x minus 1. So we can use this to rewrite the integrand as cosecant squared of x minus 1. The integral of cosecant squared of x is negative cotangent of x because the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x, which is a standard derivative. Since we're integrating cosecant squared of x instead of negative cosecant squared of x, the result is off by a constant multiple of negative 1. The integral of negative 1 is just negative x. So the integral of cotangent squared of x is negative cotangent of x minus x plus the constant of integration c. Alright, so we worked out what the integral of cotangent squared of x is. This means we just need to add the result onto the expression, which is negative cotangent of x minus x plus c. So the integral of cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x is negative cosecant of x minus cotangent of x minus x plus c.